Let's say a few words about the anatomy of the female reproductive tract. I will use the common clinical terms for these structures, the ones that you will hear in the operating room or on the wards. For example, fallopian tube and not uterine tube. We'll start with this board to show the organs. Here we see the ovary, number one, the fallopian tube, number two, and at the end of the fallopian tube, the fimbriae number three. And here we see the same structures inside a woman's body. The ovary, number one, the fallopian tube, number two, and again at the end of the fallopian tube, the fimbria, number three, and the end of the metal rod underneath the arrow labeled number one, you can see the edge of the uterus. The ovary is the primary organ of the female reproductive system. It produces the egg and also the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Let's take a look at the histology of the ovary. Now the histology of the ovary is going to change depending on whether we look at it before ovulation or after ovulation. And here we see in the uh, black circle the ovarian follicle. And inside the circle, demonstrated by the arrow, the egg or the ovum. This is how the ovary would appear before ovulation. Now at ovulation, the egg is released and the follicle becomes a different structure. It becomes the corpus luteum. And as you can see here, it's quite a large structure. Uh, this uh, ovary has a corpus luteum that's about five centimeters uh, long. Uh, that's about uh, two inches or so. And again, this is how the ovary would appear after ovulation. Let's take a look at the uh, histology of the corpus luteum. And here we see that histology. Again, this is the corpus luteum inside the ovary after ovulation and the part at the top of the slide uh, above the dark line is the uh, corpus luteum. Let's take another look at the fimbria at the end of the fallopian tube. Here we see again the fimbria on the left in the model and on the right uh, in the female pelvis. The fimbria are highly folded. If we take a look at the histology of the fallopian tube, we can see the highly folded structure uh, of the fallopian tube. Let's talk about the uterus. The top of the uterus is called the fundus. Underneath we find the body of the uterus and the opening of the uterus into the vagina is called the cervix. The area in the circle is the cervix. Let's take a look at the histology of the uterus now. And in this slide, we see a complete section of the uterus showing the uterine muscle as well as the surface or endometrium of the uterus. In this view of the uterine wall, the muscle layer is darkened and we see only the surface or the endometrium of the uterus. This is the layer of the uterus that is sloughed off during menstruation. Let's take a look at the lower part of the uterus, the cervix. Here is the histology of the cervix. And if you look at the surface, you'll see on the left a squamous epithelium and on the right 
simple columnar epithelium. The transition between squamous and columnar epithelium is shown here by the arrow. This area is called the transition zone and it's important because this is the area that uh, can develop into cervical cancer. This area is sampled when a pap smear is done. Let's take a look at the vagina. You see here in the model In the next slide, we see these spaces between the cervix and the vaginal wall. The one shown is the posterior fornix. In the plural, it's fornices. And these structures are important in patient care. For example, vaginal suppositories can be placed here. A cervical cap fits into the fornices, as does a diaphragm. And during a vaginal hysterectomy, the peritoneal cavity can be entered through the posterior vaginal fornix. Let's take a look at the uh, histology now of the vagina, shown in this slide. And you can see that the vagina has stratified squamous epithelium, the same type of tissue found in the skin and in the esophagus. Can you think of why that would be? Another important anatomical area in the female reproductive tract is shown here. The space between the posterior surface of the uterus and the large bowel. This area has a number of names. It's called the recto-uterine pouch or the pouch of Douglas, but most commonly referred to uh, as the cul-de-sac. You can see it on the left in the circle and an enlargement of this area labeled 15 on the right. Here's a picture from a diagnostic laparoscopy. And you can see the metal probe lifting up the uterus and the space underneath the uterus is the cul-de-sac. In this picture, we can see the ovaries. And here are the fimbriae at the end of the fallopian tube. Here are the fallopian tubes. Again, the uterus, we're looking at the fundus or the top of the uterus in this uh, picture. And again, the area behind the uterus and in front of the large bowel shown here with various names, most commonly referred to as the cul-de-sac, but you might also hear it referred to as the pouch of Douglas or the recto-uterine pouch. Now let's go back to our uh, model and take a look at some of the other structures in the female pelvis. At the end of the arrow you see the bladder and notice that the bladder is right up against the anterior surface of the uterus. The urethra, the tube from the bladder to the outside, is shown here at the end of the arrow. And the ureter, where it enters the uh, pelvis, is shown here uh, at the red arrow. As the ureter comes down into the pelvis, it comes very close to the cervix. Although you can't see it in this picture, uh, that can be a real problem in gynecologic surgery. Gynecologists must be very careful in doing a hysterectomy uh, not to damage the ureter when removing the uterus uh, since it comes so close to the uh, cervix. Now be careful not to mix up the word ureter and urethra. This is a common mistake that students make. So the 
A ureter is the tube from the kidney to the bladder, and the urethra is the tube from the bladder to the outside. Let's take a look at the external female genitalia. Here we see the clitoris and the clitoral hood, the labia minora, and the labia majora, though they are not seen in their entirety. Also, uh, you can see the urethra and the opening to the vagina. You can also see the anus and the uh, tissue in between the vagina and the anus, the perineum. The perineum is important in obstetrics because it can be torn during a vaginal delivery and may need to be repaired uh, and can be cut by a procedure called episiotomy, which of course again would require a repair. So that's our survey of the female reproductive system uh, and uh, thank you for your attention.